All right. All right, everyone. Uh, I'll get started with the first question and then we'll turn over to anyone in the room. Ash, welcome to Melbourne. Um, just talk us through how important it is for you to get some good matches under your belt here before the Australian Open starts next week. Yeah, obviously it's exciting for, for all of tennis to, to be back, I suppose, and um, obviously getting a few matches hopefully under my belt before the Australian Open starts will be good, but uh, I think overall I think all the players are very excited and very grateful that we've got tennis back and we have an Australian summer. Okay, thank you. We'll go to questions in the room. Courtney? Uh, Ash, did it feel any different out there, did, like walking around the grounds? Does it feel like a different scenario because we're normally finished, like the meters is about to go on at this time of the year? Yeah, well, I think I think it is different. Uh, I think there's always there's been an adjustment from everyone. I, th I think certainly underneath um, where we do all of our preparation and kind of um, all where the scores are and, and where the players go feels quite normal. Um, but obviously, uh, with the with the lesser crowds and less people around the courts, uh, just generally moving around the site is a little bit easier. Um, but it's it's different. It's an adjustment. But I know that come. Uh, you know, deeper into this, to, into the tournament, and, and obviously into the Australian Open, the, the crowds will be here to the capacity that they're allowed, without a doubt. So I think it's going to be uh, a really nice vibe once once people start rolling in. Okay, Craig. Ash, uh, similar thing on this, the difference for yourself. How different has this break been compared to the other break that you had? Uh, oh, they're no, they're exceptionally different. Uh, I think very different circumstances. Um, Obviously, this this break was forced in a way. Um, obviously, it was still the decision of, of myself and my team for us not to have played last year for, for an extended period, but um, obviously very different circumstances to, to my previous time when, when I had a lengthy delay. But, uh, look, it's, it's really nice to be back now. I've been, like I said, I've been kind of a little bit impatient the last two or three months to knowing that the summer was coming, the summer was coming, uh, getting excited to, to start and play again. Uh, obviously, I love playing in Australia, and I think we're... Oh, I'm, personally, I'm, I'm really grateful and excited at the opportunity again to play here. OK, Aki? You haven't played the official match last uh, like uh, 11 months or 12 months. But, um, but I know that this country, Australia, is really has a strict uh, rule against coronavirus. But uh, as a foreigner, I don't know much about the, what kind of situation you have gone through this like uh, one year. So could you explain a little bit about that, your situation? Yeah, obviously everyone uh, has had a bit of a different situation, a unique situation, but uh, the laws in Australia have been very strict and I think um, as, as a country and as a whole, uh, it's why at the moment uh, our cases are, are quite low, the levels are very low, which has been, which has been fantastic, but um, there's, the, there's the understanding that we have taken the, uh, the strict lockdown. The government has been um, quite quick to act on, on any and all cases, um, which, you know, having not been around the rest of the world, I'm, I'm unsure of what it's like uh, around the rest of the world, so it's hard for me to comment on that. But I know that um, as, as Australians, it's been um, quite a strict policy, and I think everyone has uh, respected it, everyone has accepted it, um, and, and as a country and as a whole, uh, I think we've done exceptionally well uh, with, with what we've been throwing out the last 12 months. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I heard that uh, you couldn't even see your coach because of some like uh, border restriction between uh, Melbourne and uh, Victoria State and the uh, Yes, yeah, with Queensland. So, I mean, I, I didn't see Ties um, for six months, from March until October. Um, he uh, he came up to, to Brisbane uh, and had to do two weeks in quarantine to, to get into Brisbane at the time the borders were closed. And um, for us, that was an adjustment, of course. Um, but uh, it's, you know, for, for Ties to have that commitment to do two weeks in, in quarantine to then come and do a, a lengthy training block that we did up in Brisbane uh, was fantastic. And um, obviously it's, it's challenging for everyone, but that was the rules that, that we lived by. Um, we, uh, we respected them, uh, we were abiding by them, and, and um, now we've got the opportunity to play and, and move quite freely down here in Melbourne, um, as, as all the other players have uh, now that they've done their two-week quarantine. OK, Karen? Uh, to follow on that, because of how strict the rules were that you all abided by, do you feel like in this sports mad state that as excited as people are to have this event, there's also, they're kind of conflicted, there's a bit of worry, like are we tempting the fates by bringing in all these people and risking maybe another outbreak? Yeah, I think personally I can completely understand um, what 
maybe a little bit of the, the concern that a lot of the, the Melburnians had. Obviously, they've had an extremely rough period over the last six or 12 months, probably the harshest of all states around Australia. So I can um, completely understand that and I, I feel for them. I mean, I, I lived down here for, for 18 months. I have a lot of friends down here. Uh, we're chatting to them throughout the year and, uh, you know, it was pretty heartbreaking to know what they were going through and I can completely understand that, which is, which is why the rules were put in place uh, and I think which is why the players coming from international um, arrivals and, and internationally across the world had to respect that. Um, and I think, I think they have, uh, honestly. And um, I know even for us from Queensland, we, we had to uh, keep an eye on the borders. Obviously, they can shut down quite quickly. So we had to adjust uh, and be quite fluid as well. But I can certainly understand that um, from a Victorian and Melbourneian perspective. Um, but, I mean, overall, I, uh, you know, it's pretty amazing to think of where Victoria was five, six months ago to, to where we are now is quite remarkable and it's a testament to, to everyone down here uh, respecting the rules and, and living by the rules that were put in place by the government. Okay, Dan? Uh, what the upsides to last year was you got a lot of time back in Brisbane to watch your beloved Tigers. <laughs> did that, seeing them come home again, does that keep the competitive juices flowing as a fan of that and then to get back into your own competition? Yeah, I mean, I, overall, I'm a competitive person. I, I bring competition into my training, uh, into into my hobbies, but certainly watching the Tigers uh, from a from fans' perspective was incredible. And, you know, I never thought I'd see the day where there'd be a grand final at the Gabba, uh, that I'd be home to watch it and the Tigers are in it as well. So it's the stars align for me in, in a fans' perspective for, with football, but uh, it, was, it was nice to be home. Uh, and I felt like, you know, I got to do a lot of things this in oh, last year that... Uh, I don't get to do while I'm travelling, so I certainly had to uh, enjoy that um, and, and take the silver lining for, for the cards that we were dealt. OK, we'll go up here. Yeah. Uh, you not having to do the 14-day uh, quarantine is an advantage for you, as has been suggested? Yeah, I think it's, it's a different... It's a different preparation for everyone. Um, I know the, the WTA have done a fantastic job bringing in that additional tournament for those that were stuck in quarantine, giving them a few extra days to prepare, uh, which, which is incredible. I think that's it's probably been really well received from, from all of the girls, both those that were in the hard lockdown, those that were moving freely around, and also those that were in um, the, the quarantine where they had the four or five hours out a day where they could practice. And I think overall it's, it's as fair an outcome as you can possibly expect, I think. And uh, I think just having to understand the rules that the government have put in place in Australia, they've been the same rules for the whole year. Um, so I think whether... Um, where tennis players or, you know, you're, it doesn't matter what profession you're in, I think you have to live by the rules, you have to abide by the rules that, are, that have been put in by the government. And I think, for me, it's, it's not an advantage, it's not a disadvantage, it is just is what it is. It's the situation um, that we're dealing with now and I think um, when, you know, in a week's time when everyone's preparing for the Australian Open, uh, everyone will be ready to go regardless of their preparation. Not my own. Uh, so maybe from you guys, but that's that's on you. That's not on me. Okay, Courtney. Um, was Pam in hard lockdown? Yeah, she was. And so, and, and so for her, I mean, so she's she's obviously played a competitive match probably before a lot of the other people that were yes. in the hard lockdown. How's how's she going? And, and how did she find it? You know, just out there. I know the first went to a tiebreaker. Yeah, it was, it was, I mean, it was great for, for Jen to get out. I think she enjoyed it, first and foremost. Um, I know she, she struck a few balls yesterday, and, and when we warmed up this morning, she was, uh, she was flushing them. So I think for her, it was nice to get out there, and obviously for us as, as a new doubles partnership, uh, it was nice to, to keep things really simple today and, and just try and do the basics well. But, um, yeah, Jen's the ultimate professional. She's, uh, she was ready to go, and, and we certainly enjoyed it. Craig, last one, Craig. Yeah. What was the worst and the best things about the last year for you? And when you got down here, what was the first thing you did? You did go to the favourite coffee shop or what? <laughs> uh, oh, the best things I think was that I got to spend time with my family. Uh, I got to see my my nieces and my nephew grow. I got to spend time with them, and that was a obviously it's always a really important part of my life. Um, as for the worst thing, well. There was nothing. Uh, you know, I think I, I was extremely grateful for the position, the situation that I was in at home. And, uh, you know, I absolutely uh, 
took advantage of, of all the opportunities that I had at home. There was simply, uh, for me, no no worse thing. Um, you know, it was it was a, a great year. Of course, I would have loved to have played um, tennis and I would have loved to have played professionally, but that was a personal decision for me. And I took the opportunity to, to stay at home and, and spend time with my family. So I think, um, you know, there was there was nothing bad that came out of 2020 from a personal sense for me. And when you got here, what was the first thing you, you did? Um, I can't remember. Uh, it, yeah, I mean, probably just went to the hotel and unpacked. I mean, it's nothing, nothing fancy for me. We we just do what we do. But when you got a coffee and practice, and that's all. Okay, we'll do online. To those of you online, just a reminder: if you have a question for Ash, please raise your hand using the toolbar function. Courtney, please ask your question. Yep. Oh, hey, yeah. Ash. There you are. Yep. <laughs> Here I am. Um, but uh, just a question about um, obviously playing at home in Australia. Obviously, it's been 11 months and you were in the Middle East, but last year, you know, you came in, a lot of hoopla, a lot of attention, good success, uh, both in, obviously in Adelaide and in Melbourne. This year, kind of jumping back into things right back in the middle of kind of the, the Aussie circus, does it feel, you know, kind of the same? Does it feel different? Do you still feel the same kind of um, chatter, I guess? that kind of surrounds you um, when you play on home soil? Yeah, I think it's excitement more than anything. I, I feel excited. I feel excited as as I've ever been and as eager as I've ever been to, to get out here and play. And I think drawing on the memories from, from last Australian summer, they had great memories. Um, it was a hugely successful summer. Um, so I think we, we just draw draw from those memories. Uh, we, we stick to our processes and, and enjoy it. Uh, this is this is a time of year that I love and, and like I said, I'm I'm so grateful that we have the opportunity to do it all again. Um, so from our perspective, we, we come out here and, and do what we do. We do it with a smile on our face. Um, but we're we're certainly eager and driven and excited this year to, to get underway again. Gonzalo from BA Tennis, please ask your question. Hi, Ash from Argentina. You are the world number one, but you haven't played for almost a year. Uh, do you feel favourite for the Australian Open? Uh, yes and no. Uh, I feel like I've done all the work. I feel like I'm well prepared, but uh, I certainly don't feel like I'm... I'm more of a favourite than anyone else. Uh, we had a fantastic 2019. I feel like we we deserve to um, we deserve to be world number one. I think we we've done the work, and um, obviously not playing last year uh, could have affected that. Um, but for me, I feel like we're we're here. We're ready to play. Uh, we're well prepared and, and excited to play. Okay, that's it. Thanks very much, everyone. Cool.